Jachragivod Pershadi Hane, Jachrak Mano Shimshadi Jane. It's not necessarily that we can say unequivocally that women were the bearer of, of folk music. It's such a wide genre. There's a lot of music from a lot of different voices. We do find there are some pieces of, of music that are attributed to the woman's voice. We have a lot of work songs that we sing that were obviously created by women. They're spinning a wheel and so they would most likely create these songs to pass the time and to keep the rhythm of the work and you can hear the rhythm of the spinning or whatever the activity is in the music itself. It's interesting that for a woman the two points in their lives that were the most rich and pleasant were their youth and their role as the matriarch. And in between their wedding day and the beginning of their life as a hars, as a bride, was actually difficult and one that was burdened with silence and a lot of tasks that you know were sort of low on the totem pole. So the wedding songs, although beautiful and tinged with something celebratory did have a sadness to them. When it came to being made a match with somebody, typically the matchmaker would make the match for them. And so there is this call of, please give me to the right person. And so there is a song that we sing called Gago Mare Garkezis, which is a please, arrange my marriage. Don't give me to the tailor. He'll, he'll work in his threads all day and he won't pay any attention to me. Don't give me to the teacher. He'll be at school all day. He'll read books all day. He won't hear me. Give me to the shepherd who will cradle me, who will treat me with kindness, who will give me milk. We don't really know where some of these songs originated or who the original voices were, but there are a series of songs, uh, some of the work songs about spinning wool, the lullabies, that we can surmise are from the voice of a female. There's one very famous Armenian a lullaby from Shadach called Ari Im Sochag. And uh, this is a song where a mother is trying to lull her crying child to sleep and the child won't sleep. <laughs> and she calls upon a, a sweet bird that embodies the, the idea of a priest and the child cries, the child won't sleep. She calls the nightingale, the dove, the lark, and they all come and they sing and the child won't sleep. She finally, in desperation, calls on the hawk, the bird of war, the fighting bird, the powerful bird, to come and sing a song of rebellion and to sing a song of war. And it is only that song that lulls her child to sleep. So this speaks to the frustration of the mother, the voice of the female through time. It also speaks of the culture, and what the Armenians have endured through time. It wasn't just one event, it was hundreds of years of the land being um, turned upside down, as it were, um, with different rulers and different invaders. It's a really powerful song that speaks still to Armenians today who sometimes get emotional when they hear it because uh, it's the song of rebellion that lulls the child. <laughs> Women in the villages didn't have much of a voice. Girls, really, were married off as young as age 13, 14. Um, they didn't have a choice in who they married. They weren't really allowed to go to school. Um, they didn't have a, a means or a place to, to speak their minds. Um, they were sheltered. They weren't allowed to roam freely, really, in the villages. So we hear these songs um, coming from the heart of females through time. and. 
that seems to be a place where they were able to speak their minds and speak their hearts.